Okay, welcome, greetings. Just a quick one on the uh, Azimuth Elevation GS5500 Yesu Rotator maintenance that I'm carrying out. And what you've got now is the uh, software I use to set up the calibration to make sure that it matches what the controller unit says and the automatic um, interface, which is the 232B, which is hooked up to the PC. So in other words, it syncs everything up. So I've got this software, I've just selected COM3 as you can see there. I'm going to open it up and what will happen is it should start to read the position. So as you can see there, it's reading the azimuth position of 114 degrees, which that's what it says on the control unit. When I check the elevation, I click that box there and scroll down the page. I'll just clean the setup. And uh, we've got elevation of zero or one, which is about right at the minute, and 314. So if I move the uh, control unit, you'll see the the uh, values are changing so it's already picking it up i'll set it to 270 uh, on the controller which i think is about right and we'll just double check that's actually 267 so near enough 270 i can just tweak that but if i wanted to i could adjust that up by adjusting the values uh in, in these adjustment boxes here by controlling this little feature here if i adjust that i can set it to zero set it to 360 on the azimuth if i want to reset the elevation I can set that to zero and set that to 90. I've already done all that, so I don't really want to start changing stuff. So I just thought I'd show how it works. Also, another uh, interesting feature is these features here. These are the speed controls. So we've got four different speed settings for this rotator unit. So I've been controlling it on the slowest setting, but you've actually got different speeds with it being an AC powered motor. Uh, so that's some information you might not have known about. So let's have a quick uh, play now. I'm going to turn the satellite tracking software on and I'm going to uh, show you the antenna system and then I'm going to st strip it down and start to clean it all up. So what we've got on the screen now is a SAT PC32. Uh, this is version 12.8. Free download. Obviously you can register, get the additional features. So what I've just dragged down there is a countdown um, square. Sorry about that. The countdown square and it's telling us that the next uh, satellite will be in range in four minutes which is alpha oscar 7 below that is iss that's going to be in range in 26 minutes and the other information you can see so your time is there and your actual other information is your elevation your maximum elevation so the ao7 uh, will peak at 68 iss will pass over with a 46 degree uh, above ground elevation and so on the one after that is ao73 which is coming in 37 minutes with 47 degrees elevation so all this information is pretty handy to pre-plan. But what I'm doing is I'm using this particular software to drive my radio and also my satellite tracking rotator system, which is what we're doing right now. So I've got the rotator turned on and I've got the software on. I've calibrated it. So all that's left to do is to see if it works. So I'm going to click on AO7 just to give you a demonstration and then we'll quick t take a quick look at uh, what happens next. <laughs> So as you can see, there's an interface unit there. It's the COM232B connected to the computer, and that's connected to the G5500 rotator control unit. And then also we've got the cat cable connected to the FT847. So all this is controlled and run by the software, which I've just showed you. And as you can see on the top there, you've got your controls. So we've got R for rotator, C for cat, and various other controls. And right now the satellite antenna is turning into position. So yeah, so I've got the controller unit. You can saw, saw it's starting to flash red. Uh, that were the interface, the 232B interface controlling this antenna and rotator. And as you can see, I've got the uh, same setup as what I've been operating. Still got to repair it. All I've done is I've just uh, swapped the uh, polarization on the uh, 145 beam uh, and made it vertical. It was horizontal. And I've also started to add some extra uh, elements for a 435 uh, or 433 uh, vertical Yagi, which you can see I've bolted them on. And I'm thinking about taking the X beam off because uh, I've got uh, another plan for that. So there, so we're operating now automatically, uh, as you can see. So I'll just uh, go out and give you a quick uh, uh, few seconds watching this. I'm quiet. What I'm doing is I'm going to get rid of all this cabling, neaten it all up, uh, reduce all this, get rid of that one, get 
small little boom on there. That should be okay. But right now he's tracking in all seven. So as you can see that's doing it automatically by itself. Don't particularly move very far with each reposition as the satellite comes. Uh, you can see it does turn but only small movements. So yeah, I'll uh, whip it down now and show you a little close up of it all. So what I've got is a uh, telescopic pole. idea of that is so I can work on it a lot easier. So yeah I'm going to remove that, take this one off um, and then I'm going to use this. So I've got a couple of elements on it already. Possibly continue, put, maybe get two more elements on there and then we'll see how this performs. I figured that having the, possibly one antenna system as opposed to two separated might just be a little bit easier and it'll certainly be easily getting it back up where I want it to go so uh, it might like sweet from that perspective and uh, also what I plan on doing is I've got the other half of that so that's just half of that particular antenna I've got the other half so I'm going to connect that up and I'll have 30 elements and then I'm probably going to make a similar corresponding 30 element X beam for 145 but I'll have that on a different setup on the tripod system so that's just a plan for later so for now I'm going to concentrate on cleaning this up repairing that back uh, missing bit of the antenna on the rear reflector and adding a couple more elements for this 70 cents vertical polarized antenna system so we're going to be using vertical 145 and vertical 435 437 that kind of band which should be quite interesting as opposed to circular polarization which I have been using so yeah this is the x-beam as you can see it's well and truly needs cleaning up so i'm not too keen on on the how, how i've had it set up you see we've got the uh, feed connection point there for the vertical bit but it's fairly close to this bracketing system which can't really be benefiting it too well all this pulling uh, it must affect its performance there's the rear horizontal one so yeah quite a crude way of doing it uh, and it's got the the splitting unit there with the ballon so the actual unit itself is, is working fine, so I've not really done anything with it yet. I know I showed you a video earlier when I took it down, but obviously it's a lot easier to see it when it's set up on this temporary pole, which just allows me to lift it up and, uh, and work on it. So yeah, I started cleaning up this antenna. Uh, this is coming up together nicely now, so I've got a little bit more cleaning to do and um, finishing off. I've moved the actual bracket so the bracket now is now here it was previously uh, around this area uh, more, of, more of a central uh, point around there uh, which were a little bit more balanced but again uh, it couldn't interfere with the performance of the the actual radiated element so the radiated element is now in front of the, the position and hopefully that will assist and make it better it does seem to be working okay uh, on the initial inspection and the little plane that I've been doing through the weekend. So that's about it for now. I'll uh, add a little bit more to it when I, I whip this off and uh, tidy the, all these cables up. Because all these cables are really annoying. The main reason why I, I brought it down because I've been catching and trailing. So they're just a little bit generous with the slack. I need to uh, come up with a much better idea, which that's what I'm going to be doing right now.
yeah, I get to sort all this out once and for all properly. There's a problem with too much slack in the cables. it all and check it all out thoroughly. Workable on this little stand. And I can uh, get the feeders how I want them, same length. I'm going to try this uh, 77 beam on here, so I'm going to have to put a different plug on there. I can do. And run these a lot tighter this time. So I've probably got something like more like this, possibly. I'm going to put a different boom, boom in. Either way, we're going to get it sorted out, so yeah, this is just a quick uh, mess around. Can't do a bit of cleaning up, get the emery paper and brillo pad out and uh, mess around with those elements from that 70 cents. Do a bit of soldering of the coax and I'll show you what it looks like when I've done that. Right, so here we are. I've got the uh, drill out bit of aluminium tube. This is the snapped rear reflector that I've taken off the back of this. So the idea is I'm going to use this one and replace it, got it measured out, so it's going to be obviously that kind of size. So I'm just going to drill a little hole and uh, hopefully it shouldn't be too difficult. It's not very accurate, I'm going to put it in my vise, nice and square and away we go. <laughs> Helps me put the battery in of course. What we're feeling a bit like. Always a bit tricky with round tubes. Quite a thick wall tube, which is good. Should stand up. I'm going to clean all this up, obviously. This uh, bit of old aluminium tube, old antenna, it's been knocking around for 20 years. They don't make them like this, so yeah, decent tube wall thickness on that one. So, nice clean little hole on that, and we shall uh, cut it to size and fit it to the back of the antenna. Right, out with the uh, traditional technique, which is obviously the hacksaw. Could have got the grinder out, but thought what the heck it's only a two minute job a bit of aluminium cut all day long at work so should get a good square cut So keeping it could come in handy for another project possibly but right now this is what I'm after so this is going to be my uh, replacement reflecting um, element or director but reflector even yeah at the back so this will be 
adequate and obviously a decent wall thickness so I'm just going to clean it up and fit it and I'm wanted by the younger, the eldest I think what, what's up? Wait, what are you doing? Making a video as usual. <laughs> no, uh, I'm sorry if I interrupted you. Is anyway, you I'll be back in a minute. Pretty much, I'm just saying to my dad, if you are hearing strange noises in the living room, it's because my mum was watching this thing and it's like, it's really loud beeping noises and it's about like, I think it's about radio and stuff, like tuning stuff. Cool, well. Really? It hurts my ears, it's just really loud squeaking noises. <laughs> oh yeah, let's have a clean this up. It's easy enough. Bit of uh, mid-paper. It's good, it's good under there. As you can see. Yeah, that's good. Come on, nice. Let's have a clean this up. Oh, it's really squeaky. Yeah, that's good. It's been a bit of time doing that. Finishing off this and that is going to fit just on the back there, like that. Fit there so so that'll, that'll beef that up. It'll also block signal from the back a little bit better than the thin one that was there in the first place. So yeah, it's going okay, is this? Enjoying every, every minute of it as usual. Hope you're keeping up. So yeah. Put it on, it's not too bad actually, it's worked out quite good. So, there is the uh, finished product, nice and solid. So, I've got a decent mounting on. I ended up getting a longer bolt, obviously, because it's thicker tubing. I'm pretty happy with that, it's looking good. So, that'll uh, work out pretty decent, I would say. Maybe not. <laughs> so, yeah, a bit more cleaning up to do on the antenna, and that's uh, done. And then I've just got to finish off. A little soldering job that I've always so started. I've you know, just prepped up that braid bit, so I'm just gonna finish off this, put a plug on that. I have to take the uh, other type of plug off, different fitting on this antenna to the X beam. So I am, I'm gonna actually say mess about and fully build up the X beam with the full 30 elements, I reckon. So I'll clean it up properly, so that's what I'm doing all this for. So yeah, I'm just gonna put the braid back on there, get a, a brand new plug, this type, uh, to replace what I've just chopped off, which is the end type. So I've just taken the end type off, cut it off, got plenty of them, and then I'm gonna put this one on just for this particular, just, just for now, because I'm just gonna try out this, um, these elements for 433 to 435, or whatever it is, the 70 SEMS elements. I'm going to try them out, see how well that works vertical, because the little arrow antenna, it's really simple, that works brilliantly, so I'm really happy with that. So we're just going to cut this insulation off, drop that back down to saw, get the uh, internal wire sticking through and get the soldering iron on it, and then it's good to go. So I'll show you what that looks like uh, when I get to that stage, I'm sure you've all done a little bit of soldering before. Okay, you've talked me into it, so first thing to remember, slide this part on here, this uh, outer uh, ring of the coaxial connector, the plug. Slide that over the coax. Once you've done that, fold your braid back, clean off any bits of sticking out, make sure that your insulation's good, get your copper, bare copper sticking through. And then looking at the SO239 or PL connector, whatever you want to call it, there's a thread in there. Drop this on, guide it through, make sure and give it a good screw and all as you can see straight away I've cut it so it comes all the way through so give that a good screw make sure you've got it on tight with that thread it'll get a good connection to the braid which will give you the ground that you're after so keep that going on once it's tight like that you know when you're there you can't get it on any further so it's sticking through nicely now it's not great soldering outdoors but I'm doing this entire job outside, so let's see if we've got any heat on the iron if we can manage it. Should have put my glasses on. But we'll do okay. So a little bit of heat transferring from the iron to the bare wire. Get the conduction in place. And get the soldering the solder close by at all times because we don't want to overheat it. So now we've got enough temperature to run that in nicely. Let it run down. 
Need a bit more solder in just for good measure. And remove the iron, let it cool by itself. Don't touch it at this stage, very important. You don't want to cause any movement and get a dry joint. So that should be fine. So all I'm going to do now is snip that off and we're good to go. So I'll do that now. Should be good to go immediately. Normally use a pair of side cutters, but that'll work. So there we have a soldered up connection. Finished. Very simple. All right, just about end of the video. So darkness is drawing in fast, but as you can see, I managed to get everything up. Just got to hire it now and try it. Got the cables back on. Got this element on. It's gone on nicely. All lined up correctly and looking good. So that'll do. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Right, that's it. I'm back in now. That was quite a, a day's or oh, a couple of hours effort there. It got dark on me, so I'm running out of time. But did actually get everything up and finished. So I managed to successfully replace the rear uh, bit of tubing. Well, actually, it was solid bar. So I've put a piece of chunky tubing, about three mil wall thickness, as you saw. So I'm pretty pleased with that. Right now, I'm listening to it. As you can hear the uh, satellite, the NOAA weather satellite coming over. I've got the full automated control working and uh, it's just case of sitting back. So I've tested out the uh, little 433 antenna on a local repeater and that fired it up with an excellent end stopping signal. So we'll see how that fares on some of these satellites. And then what I possibly will do is make a couple more elements for the 70 sems beam. At the moment there's two five elements. I've got the five element 145 and the five element uh, 433 uh, so i might uh, extend that and put two more elements on that are seven element and then that'll give me a little bit more gain so also i may change the polarization from um, vertical to horizontal and make it into a cross yagi possibly but we'll see how it fares it might work better both vertically polarized and that's what we're going to find out so join me again later on a series of tests as we uh, see what it performs like and uh, play around and just test it out for a little bit, have a bit of fun. Enjoy the rest of the Easter from M0YKS. Thanks for watching the video, as usual. 73, stay safe and healthy.